In this video, we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations. So here I've got a simultaneous equation. It's two equations with two unknowns. With two unknowns, you always need two equations. You're probably used to solving equations with one unknown in it. And if you haven't done that, I'd go back to my video on solving equations and do that first. Okay, so how do we do this? There's a couple of methods to solving simultaneous equations. I'm going to use the elimination method on this video. So the first step is to try to make the x's the same. Now, just like fractions, you can times the whole equation by any number and it doesn't change the equation. So we can times the top equation or the bottom equation by whatever number we like. However, we're going to aim to times it by a number such that the x's become the same on both. So on the top one, we've got 2x, and on the bottom one, we've got 3x. And you've probably already guessed it, you could times the top one by 3, and the bottom one by 2, and they'll both become 6x. So let's go ahead and do that. So here you can see I've times the top equation by 3, and you must times the whole equation by 3. So I've times the 2x by 3, the 3y by 3, and also the 19 by 3. Now let's go ahead and do that to the second equation. So here, I've times the bottom equation by 2. And that's including the 3x, the 2y, and the 16. You must times the whole equation, otherwise you'll end up changing the equation. And we've managed to make the x's the same. They've both become 6x. So as a rule, you can always remember, if you have 2x and 3x, just times them by each other. The 2x you can times by 3, and the 3x is times by 2. In some cases, you might do it slightly differently, and we might look at one of those cases later. Okay, so also remember that we've made the x's the same. If you wanted, you could also make the y's the same. But in these videos, I'm going to concentrate on just making the x's the same. Okay, so in the next step, we're going to look at the two new equations we made, and we're going to subtract them. That'll get rid of the 6x's. So let's go ahead and do our subtraction. 6x's cancel each other off, coming 0. Then we have 9y minus 4y, and that gives us 5y. Put the equals down. Then we have 57 minus 32, and that gives us 25. Now look here, we've got a nice easy equation now. We've got 5y equals 25, and there's only one unknown, so you can just go ahead and solve it. So if you've done the video on solving equations, you'll know to just divide both sides by 5, because that 5y means 5 times y, and you'll just do the opposite, giving us y equals 5. Now all we've got left to do is solve the x. Since you've got the y, you can now use any of your first two equations, or even these ones, preferably we use the first two equations, just throw that y equals 5 in, and you'll end up solving the x. So let's write down one of our first two equations. So I'm going to go for the first one, which says 2x plus 3y equals 19. So I need to put y in as 5 into my equation. So the 2x can stay as 2x, plus, and now I've got 3y, but I know y to be 5, and 3y means 3 times y, so I'll just do 3 times 5, giving us 15, and the 19 stays as 19. Now, again, this is going to be some solving equations, so get rid of that 15, it's plus 15, so we're going to minus 15 from both sides. This side, the 15 just disappears. And here you're going to have to minus 15 as well. And 19 minus 15 is 4. Now simply divide both sides by 2. Left hand side just becomes x. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. And you've solved your simultaneous equations. So here we've got another set of simultaneous equations. Okay, so let's try and make the x's the same as before. Now, you could times them by each other. So the top you've got 2x and the bottom you've got 4x. So we could go ahead and times the top one by 4 and the bottom one by 2, making them both into 8x. But you might have spotted an easier way to make them both the same. The 2x can just be multiplied by 2, making the top one 4x. And the bottom one can be left the same, and they'll both be 4x. And that will probably be a little bit more simpler. So let's go ahead and do that. So here you can see I've times the top equation by 2. And remember, I've times the whole equation by 2, so every element has been multiplied by 2. And remember, the second equation, we're going to leave it as it is, because it's already 4x. So we'll just rewrite it as it is. So our next step is to do the subtraction. Sometimes, to eliminate one of the 
variables, the x or the y, you might need to add. Now, what I would do is I'd reason with yourself to check which one makes sense, which one will get rid of the x's. So here, for example, if I added 4x plus 4x, it will become 8x, and it's not being eliminated. And remember, this is the elimination method. So since it's not being limited by adding, it must be subtract 4x minus 4x, which gets rid of the x's. Okay, so 4x minus 4x is nothing. Now you've got 6y subtract minus 2y, so you have a minus minus situation. You've got 6y minus minus 2y. So that would become 6y plus 2y. Remember when you have a negative with another negative next to it, it just becomes a plus. So 6y plus 2y would become 8y. Then we have minus 2, minus 22, which is minus 24. And you probably know the next step. Just divide both sides by 8, and you have y equals minus 3. And now our last step is to get the x. And remember, we're just going to put this y value in to one of our first two equations. And it could be either of the two. Okay, so 2x can stay as 2x. But here we've got plus 3y. And we know y to be minus 3. So 3y means 3 times y. And we're going to do 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9. Now a bit of algebra. Add 9 to both sides. And we have x equals 4. Okay, so here's our third example. Now, looking at the x's, we've got 5x and 6x. We're just going to multiply them by each other. So the 5x, I'll times it by 6, and the 6x, I'll times it by 5. So here I've multiplied my first equation all by 6, and this is my second equation times by 5. Just be careful with the minus 2y. When you times that by 5, it's minus 10y. It's always the signs which cause mistakes in these type of questions. So as before, we're going to do subtraction, because that's what will get rid of the 30x's. So 30x minus 30x is nothing, so that disappears. And we've got 6y subtract, or you can say 6y minus, minus 10y. Now, of course, we've got a minus minus situation here, so it becomes 6y plus 10y, giving us 16y. And we've got 66 minus 90, which is minus 24. And dividing both sides by 16, and of course you could do this in a calculator, gives us minus 1.5. Now we just need to throw this minus 1.5 into one of the first two equations. Okay, so we've got 5x, this is plus y, but y is minus 1.5, so we'll just write minus 1.5 there. The 11 stays as 11. So we need to add 1.5 to both sides. And dividing both sides by 5 gives us, again, you can do some calculator, x equals 2.5. And there we have our answers. Now, I didn't mention this before, but you could check your answers with the equation you didn't use. So once I worked out y, I used the first equation to work out x. Now, I haven't used the second equation, so I could plug in my two answers into the second equation, and if it works then you know you got your answer right. But I'd only do that if you've got too much extra time in the exams. I wouldn't waste time doing that. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.